Okay, uh, in this video, I want to introduce uh, our API on heaps, which will represent a uh, heap is just the name I'm calling the shared memory data structure. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to use it by means of an example. I actually already did this, but I'm going to do it again. Let me kind of delete everything. So, um, what you will see is that we have uh, three constructors and one selector. And basically what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to do a few examples to illustrate what you can do with these uh, various um, API calls. Uh, such uh, API will be necessary for module five, as you will see in the following video. So for now, let's go through each one. So what you will see is that we have um, a first constructor, which is just a, a simple value that represents a, an empty heap. Uh, so this is just a, a heap without any memory cells at all. Uh, and then we have a function that uh, works a bit like uh, C's malloc, if you will, um, where you are allocating a place in memory. Uh, in C, you actually just specify the size. Um, but here, we don't specify the, the size. What we do is just we initialize it with some value. Okay, and then the, the size really doesn't matter. What we really care about is um, store this value V in the heap. So what heap a lock has to return is a handle. Okay, so the handle to this memory cell that will hold V. The next operation is put. And what put does is it updates the, the heap uh, in a given, so R here is gonna be the, the, the handle to a memory cell that has to exist. And then what we do is we update the position or the contents of the memory cell, um, remove the old and put in the new. Finally, we have heap get, heap get that will just uh, return the contents of a memory cell. So uh, now I'm going to open the code and I'm going to start uh, playing around with, with the various operations. So first let's look at heap empty. Let's print this out to see what it does. Let me comment this out because we don't need it anymore. We don't need this either. Okay, so if I run this, I will print out the contents of empty heap. How do you write it? Empty heap, empty heap. If I run it, I should see the contents, basically my implementation of the heap. It's just the data structure that is surrounding a hash table. And the hash table is initialized as empty. So this is why you get this output. So now what we can do is we want to allocate some data um, and place it inside the heap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use heap alloc. And now I'm going to take first parameter is going to be the heap. Second parameter is going to be uh, the value that you want to store. So in this case, I want to store a string and I want to store um, heaps are cool. Okay, so this is the value I'm storing in the heap. Let's see what happens when I call this. Okay, so when I call it, I get this EFF data structure that contains two things. The first thing is the new heap. The second thing is this handle. Okay, so what is a handle? A handle is going to be um, the equivalent of a C pointer or a reference. So it's, it's what we have to reference um, the memory location that will hold the value that we just passed. Okay, so we want to store this string somewhere. The handle is where that place is, right? So that is handle. Uh, so now let's look at the, the heap. So as you can see, the heap contains a hash table as before, but now the hash table has a key, which contains, of course, the handle. 
and the value, which is the contents of that memory cell, which in this case is the, the string we just gave it. So in this case, heaps are cool. Okay, so if I want to, now I want to store this here, and I want to say that this is going to be my heap zero and my uh, handle zero, right? So notice that an EFF is a very simple data structure that is basically a pair, right? It contains a heap, it contains a value. So now let's go back to the to this slide. And this is the definition of a struct of that struct. It contains first field is the state, second field is the result. Okay. Um, so the state is going to be the heap, and the result is the handle, the new handle. Right? So why do you think we need this? Why do you think we need to return uh, this pair of heap and handle? The reason we need it is because uh, the language is immutable, and the only way for us to return um, the side effect of uh, mutation, right, is by returning the new hash table. So effectively, when we create, when we allocate something, we have to somehow return um, that hash table. So that's what I was writing here. Okay, so the, the logic of heap allocation has to be Given a hash table, you first thing you do is you create a new memory handle, and then you store that handle in the store that key in the hash table, uh, and you're storing the in this case the key the handle zero, and the string that we're storing is heaps are cool, uh, and then we need to return the updated hash table. So that we can, so that any code that follows can uh, can observe the side effect, right? Can observe the the change that we performed in the in said hash table, and we also need the handle so that um, so that in the future you can retrieve the contents of that of that handle, as you will see next. Again, um, or or just to take a step back, the hash table, the the shared memory is going to behave like a hash table. Right, so you have keys and values. Your keys are going to be the reference, and the values are going to be the contents that you stored in that memory. Okay, so the first thing we do here um, is actually let me show you the code. So if you go to uh, EFF here, highlighted in blue, uh, this is the struct that is being returned here. So as you can see, there's a field for state and a field for result. Um, so if I want to retrieve the heap, um, so here I allocate heaps are cool. Uh, so in this first line, line 21, I'm, uh, I'm allocating um, this string in the empty heap. What I get is a heap zero and a handle zero. So this is the heap, the first, my first heap, and then this is the handle zero. On the right hand side and this is all stored in the cff so that's what's in 21 okay so let me print that out just so you're convinced that that's the case okay so it's exactly the same output that we had before and then what i did was i I split the contents of that EFF, so I have the state on this first variable, and I have the result on the second variable. Okay, so now if I do heap zero, and I do handle zero, I should see first this heap, and secondly, this handle. So let's see if that's the case. And indeed, that's the case. Okay, okay so now what I want to do is, in this example, in this following lines of code, I'm going to allocate another value. So let's say heaps are awesome. Um, so I'm allocating on heap zero. So what that means is that I'm going to take this updated heap and I'm, get, I'm going to allocate something else in it. Okay, so let's see uh, what happens there. Let's look at the result. So if I print out this value, I should see 
in the first location, we have what we had before. So handle zero is still fine. And then handle one is the second string that, that I just allocated. Okay. Uh, and what we're returning, uh, the result is going to be handle one. Okay. So nothing too surprising. Um, and indeed, we can uncomment this, and we can do heap one, handle one, we should see the two fields. One, one in each line. Here we are. Here we are. Okay. And now we can um, perhaps retrieve the contents of the, the hash table just to convince ourselves that this works. Uh, and we can do this with, oops, with these two lines of code. Let me, let me paste it here. Okay. Actually, I can remove it. Okay. So if I do heap get, okay. So let me print this out. Heap one. Um, so heap one, and basically I can use two handles. I'm going to do heap one, and I'm going to use handle, handle zero. Notice that this is the variable I defined here, right? The result of the first allocation and then handle one, which is the result of the second allocation. Okay. So now let me print this out so that you're convinced that this indeed works. Okay. So as you can see, handle zero should hold uh, heaps are cool. And that's exactly what it's returning. And then handle one should return heaps are awesome. And that's exactly what it's uh, returning. So we can ensure that that's always the case by writing a test. So heaps are cool. And then we do check equal. Heaps are awesome. Okay. And now if you run this, everything should run without any output, which means everything is fine. So finally, I want to talk a bit about, so we've looked here at get. So get, uh, actually, let me show you what happens if I if I try to get a handle that doesn't exist, if I do handle uh, 10, 10 is not here, right? We only have zero and one. So what would happen if I were to write this? Let's see. What we get, we get an error from hash ref saying that the, um, the key is, wasn't found. So we do get an error. So retrieve, retrieve the contents of the heap. Okay. Um, and finally, I want us to look at a uh, heap put that given a heap and a handle and a value, it should override whatever value is stored old value in that handle and update it with the new value. Okay. So the example we have is, uh, okay, we do heap put and we take a uh, heap one. Okay. Heaps are simple. So what that does, first you need the key. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to overwrite handle zero, and then I'm going to do the same thing on handle one. Just want to show you what happens. So what I'm going to get is my new heap. So notice what happened. Actually, let me put XXX, which makes it um, like a bunch of X's, kind of makes it simpler to spot. So in the first line, I'm, I'm putting a bunch of X's in position handle zero, which is why here you see a bunch of X's. And then in position one, I'm put placing a bunch of X's. Uh, also notice that I'm always using heap one and because it's immutable, uh, you don't see two X's. So if I wanted to write two X's, then I would have to do, I would have to store the effect of put somewhere. So I would have to write heap three, uh, 
results from this. Okay, just to show you that this, you need to record the side effect. So it should match the first one, right? This one matches this one. They're the same. Because I just assigned it to define. And then what I want to do, heap put. If I take heap three, and I replace handle one, the contents by y, 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 I should see x in one side and y in the other. Okay. So I hope nothing too surprising. Uh, so now I can comment this out. Actually make it a bit more consistent. Okay, so now if I print everything out, you will see if we do multiple puts and we ignore the result, the heap one, there's no mutation. So let, let's see. Okay, so the, the first case that we're seeing is we, we changed heap one and we replaced the first element with axis. In the second case, we did the same, but we replaced, we did similarly. So we replaced the second handle with Y's. In the third line, what we did was we printed out the original heap to show you that this is immutable. The original heap remains unchanged. And finally, if we want to, to do perform two alterations, we need to store the updated and update it again. Okay, so that's what you're, why you're getting. You're doing a, a put, storing that in heap three, and then adding another put on heap three. And then you could see X and Y. And of course, if you print heap one again, heap one remains unchanged. Okay, see? Still the same thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna comment this out, I'm gonna comment this out, and comment this out. Okay, great. So now let me go here. Um, so we covered these, uh, all of the, the three constructors and the selectors. Um, oh, I didn't show you what happens if I try to put something that doesn't exist. So let me just show you that. So if you, if, if your handle doesn't exist, that is considered an error. So let's say I do heap three and I use a weird handle that doesn't exist and I do Z, Z, Z. I run that, I get an error. It says that the handle is unknown. Okay, so there's some error uh, protection going on here, not error protection, some defensive programming going on here that is preventing me to, you know, fabricate a handle to try to mutate something that wasn't allocated previously. Okay, uh, so that takes care of that. Uh, so I've shown you how to use uh, heaps. Um, we talked about allocation, we talked about putting, uh, which is this example. We talked about getting elements. Uh, one thing that is very important while you're implementing a, a heap is that all the um, handles are unique. Um, so that's part of the heap implementation. We have to ensure that so that whenever you allocate, you get a fresh new thing. Otherwise, you know, an old, uh, an allocation could be override giving a handle. If it's already known, you would be overriding someone else's handle which wouldn't be nice. So this is something, um, an invariant of this data structure where every new handle has to be unique uh, in that, in that uh, shared memory. Okay, so in the next video, I wanna cover a bit the implementation of um, our uh, heap data structure.